بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الاول سيدنا محمد في الاخرين اللهم صل وسلم على ابيلز بانل فاميليز اوف ذا ديزيزد ذا سينيغاليز هاي كوميشنر تو ذا ريبوبليك اوف ذا غامبيا ممبرز اوف ذا بريس كور ليديز اند جنتلمان We are here today for the official handing over of the remains of three Gambians who died in the city of Banjul on the 30th December 2014. Both our traditions and our religious beliefs in the Gambia dictate that the dead are given a fitting and decent burial immediately or as soon as possible after their death. Unfortunately for these three Gambians, it has been 1,470 days since the 30th of December when they died. So today, we are here to ensure that these bodies are given a fitting and decent burial so that their souls can finally rest in peace so we are going to hand over the bodies to the families at the end of this very short ceremony but before that i would want to call upon the chairperson of the cardi appeals panel of the gambia sheikh omar aseka to give us opening prayers for this solemn ceremony seka أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله سلام وسلام وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم لك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أنا جاي لكم يعني يا جلدي Amen, God is sacred. Amen, God is sacred. I would now call upon the representative of the Gambia Center for Victims of Human Rights Abuses to give us a short statement on behalf of the center. Representative of the Victim Center. Um, Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice. Honorable Minister of the Interior, His Excellency the Senegalese High Commissioner to the Gambia, the Deputy Inspector General of Police, members, family members of the deceased, um, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Today, 9 January 2019, marks a very solemn occasion for all gathered here today. On this day, the Gambia Center for Victims of Human Rights Violations stands in solidarity with the families and friends of the deceased, the late Captain Njagajang, the late Lieutenant Colonel Lamin Sani, the late Sergeant Jajanyas. They, in addition to many others, took on a bold step to try to bring about change in the Gambia, a change that they hope would have contributed to end to dictatorship in the face of systemic human rights abuses and violations fueled by impunity and a total disregard for the inherent rights and freedom of the people of the Gambia and the rule of law. They paid the ultimate price and lost their lives in the process. We recognize their acts of heroism their bravery and sacrifices, and we join many who share their vision in honoring their memories. We stand in solidarity with their families, loved ones, and friends during this monumental period when their bodies are returned to their families to subsequently bring about some closure for them and afford the departed decent and humane burials. 
the government of the Gambia has fulfilled one of its obligations in this regard, but, me, but more needs to be done. And during this occasion, we take this opportunity to impress upon the government of the Gambia to meet their responsibilities to the, to the numerous other families of victims of unlawful killings and enforced disappearances to help them also get the answers they yearn for and the closer they so desperately need. Chief Ibrahim Amane, Kanye Bakanyi, Alaji Mahmoud Sise, Ibu Job, Dabamarena, Ibu Lo, RSM Alfaba, Manlafikor, Mahawacham, and Sol Dao, and many other victims that have been unlawfully um, killed or enforcedly disappeared. Did anyone know where these people are? Do you know where they are? If you know, please set the truth free, and the truth will set you free. The families of these victims need closure. Steps has to, has to be taken to help speed up the identification of burial sites, exhumation of bodies, and hand over, and hand over of remains of victims to their families. As families, friends, and loved ones of the late Captain Jajanyas, Lieutenant Colonel Lamin Sane, and Sergeant Jajanyas are reunited again under these very, very difficult circumstances. We pray that the soul of the departed will rest in eternal peace, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make Jannah their final abode. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. La ta'akuzuhu sinnatu wa la naum. Lahuma fis samawati wa ma fil ardi. Man tahu endahu illa bi izni. Ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. Wala yuhaythuna bi sayin min ulmihi illa bi ba sha'a wasiya kursiyuhu samawati wal arda. Wala ya'udhuhu hifduhuma wa huwa al alil azim. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guard them eternal bliss in Jannatul Firdaus. Amen. Thank you all. I might call Yamamit to give a short statement. Yamamit. Je <coughs> a merlo na ni ni tax be ñep bolo jappante be li xew xew be dajje bi mëna am tek kon lolu ñu santé ko yalla bu baaxa baaxa ba waye limay delo fatali mbokk yi rek moy ne ñi waru leena bayyi ni rek ñi dañ sacrifice lu bari dund da fa neex njabo da fa neex doom adama da fa bëgg ba neex nga dog lolu yëpp ñew ne da ngay ñew sigil sa rew genné len ci notel yalla jaarali ni sen bakkani kon ñun ñiñ bayyi gannaaw ñun war nañu am kolere sen gannaaw olof daf ne kolere gannaaw lay fetu ñi nga xamne ñu ngi fi bayyi fi njabot lillahi wa rasuli njabot gogu seeni way jur dañ doon xalaat pour ñu mag yar len jangal len ñu tekki seeni way jur nekatuñ fi ñun ño fi nek neñ len jappo gofame ni gambia ak kep ko xamne doom adama nga ñu taxawu njabot gogu pour ñu dimbalé len ëlëga sibir ñu nek njabot gu tekki gu baax ba duñ muna ba duñ joy seeni wayjur té ñu nit buñ fekk dé seen wayjur yi duñ sëgg ci seen kanam ñi nga xamne ñu ngi amerika bayyi fa seen doom yi tam amerika dëgg la xejna am nañ duñ muna topatoyé seen njabot gi waye ñun ñep xamnañ né single parent biir amerika metti na 
ñi nga xamne ñoo dëkké America li lay wara suuli ñoom itam su fekké né holiday jotna nañuy dem di jël xalé yoyu di awu sen yaay di leen dimbalé su ko défé ñoom it sen xel dina dal li da laané won dina ko ci yok pour rek ñun ñepp ñu fatali wanté lén nak dama koy wax toujours ngeen balal ma rek jamé bon na def na lu bon ba son waye amna lu bax lén na lu def suma ko waxé nit ñi dinañ la dama dof da fa tax ñu sedd gambia dinañ xamé ñi bax ak ñi bon ñi bax ak ñi bon dinañ leen xamé ci dinañ mëna sedd ci suñu biir ñun ñi bax ñu féto bor ñi bon nak duñ leen sanni dañ leen di xëccia ci suñu bop ñu jëm leena wan lan moy bax edd leen delo wa leen ci 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 suñu bop li da laane won dina ko ci sanni amna touti yi tam luma ci bugaté moy né ñun tay nañ wax alhamdullilahi rabbil alamin yalla mu non nañu tek natu bo xamné ñiñ tek prisine ñun ño leen di jur ko nit duñ ci mun dara dañuy seug di fakatalu rek fuñ ko waxé waye alhamdullilahi rabbil alamin ñun ñak nañ waye ñakuñ ci gaccia ñun siggi nañ te kep ko xamné mbokki ñi tedd nga ma ng lay wax né gaccia nga laam bu leen joy bu leen ndakar lu li banex la banex bu ré 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 la yalla nako yalla agali waye mr ministre ma ng lay ñaan pour ñu sét naka lañuy def be am place bo xamné ñi duñ leen faté ba ci suñu sét sétat lo xamné fuñ leen di fatali ko la ak képp ko xamné rek daanu nga ci lu melni ah assalamu alaykum suma waxé lu ëpp rek ci xali doom adama la ngeen balal ma thank you thank you very much i now have the privilege to call on the representatives of the family members to give us short statements on behalf of the i mean the families of the deceased and i'll start with uh, the family of uh, the late lamin sane uh, who is uh, mr momodu b injai is going to speak on behalf of the family mr injai thank you Uh, I salute the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Honorable Minister of Interior, the EU representative, the Senegalese High Commissioner, Deputy Inspector General of Police, the President of the Cadi Appeal Court, and everybody present here today. Well, It's a very sad day on one hand but a thanksgiving day on the other hand on this very unfortunate and on unfo a uh, fateful 30th december what was said in the gambia many people who are patriots and they love their country feel very sad but those who were really real terrorists with their terrorist dictator pronounce them as terrorists we are glad that the whole world recognize their efforts towards emancipating gambians from the circles of stress hardship and terrorism We all know what transpired in the Gambia during these 22 years. We are happy that the government of the day have recognized the efforts of these three gentlemen who not out of selfishness but out of patriotism, who not out of greed but out of commitment and dedication. to the services they believe is due on them to render to their country they join hands with others we have been struggling all along nobody in the gambia even those who were supporting the dictator they know they were not living in peace they were living in an uneasy camp because everybody is prone to arrest everybody is prone to death Everybody is prone to torture. Everybody is prone to be missing. 
they are for. Even they, they know. It's just because of their selfish interest that they were helping the, the donkey, I could call it. I'm sorry to use that word because there was no humanity in him. Those who don't know him before, those who know him before can be a witness to so his activities, even when he was in the service. He was completely out of discipline, completely out of discipline. So once again, on behalf of the family, my family and all other families for that matter, we feel vindicated if they say your relative is a terrorist, but the world recognizing them as patriots. And we never thought that we will see them anymore. When they were at the death house in the history of the Gambia, dead bodies were kept in the mortuary for over five months, guarded by armed soldiers. There was a guard post there. I went there five times to see these cops. One day they, they told me, when you come here, next time we will arrest you. I said, fine. That's fine with me. I could have been there. We never know where they were dumped. But with the help of the present government, we were able to locate where they were dumped. And their bodies were exhumed. We are happy with the present government, the efforts that they have done, and anybody for that matter, to bring us to a day like today. Although it's very sad, but thanksgiving. May the Almighty Allah bless everyone who participated in one way or the other to help us arrive to this day. And may the departed souls be granted the best in paradise. I thank you all. Thank you very much, Mr. Njai. I now call on the a representative of the family of uh, the late Njaga Jan, Mamur Malik Jan, to speak on behalf of uh, the Jan family. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The Honorable Minister of Justice, Honorable Ba Tambedu, the Honorable Minister of Interior, Honorable Mbalo, the Ambassador of the Republic of Senegal, the representative of the okay, okay. the representative okay, the representative of the European Union. Uh, the representative of the uh, surviving families, the distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all other protocols respectfully observed. On this occasion, pregnant with grief and relief, I wish to commence my statement by quoting from a post by Captain Jaga Jang on Facebook on October 16, 2013. In a long post, condemning and lamenting the suffering of the Gambians in his beloved Gambia, he wrote, and I quote, all means necessary will be used to restore justice, universal human rights and democracy and the rule of law to Gambia. We must, however, not demand justice, but be just ourselves. We must not only be right or self-righteous, but also be righteous. The measure of who we are is not only in what we demand for ourselves, but also what we afford to others. Justice is not always pretty and painless to the just. The sacrifice will not end with the struggle." End of quote. The gentleman who wrote this quote is called Njaga Mahmoud Jain. The son of Mahmoud Babu Karjain, a renowned scholar, he was principal at Amitage High School, a lecturer at the Yulum Teacher Training College. His devotion to Islam is well known and need no emphasis on this occasion. His mother, his mother Ajaratu Yasin Job, a Gambian, 
who has her root in your Senegal. Jaga was born on 9th August 1971. He attended primary school at St. Peter's at Lamin and, and high school at St. Augustine's in Banjul. He proceeded to Kentucky State University in the USA, where he obtained an honors degree in criminal justice in 1999. In recounting his life in the military, we must first of all start from his great-grandparents who fought both jihad and against colonial rule. He is a direct descendant of Said Matiba, Mabajahu Jain, coming down to Babu Karjain, to Mamur Jain, and to, Jaga Jain, the fa uh, to Mamur Jain, the father of Captain Jaga Jain. He was an infantry captain commander in the US Army of Kentucky. He was deployed to Iraq on two occasions. He also served in Germany. He won many awards in the Army while serving in the US Army. What was, uh, what was going on in his co beloved country, Gambia, pricked his conscience and kept him up all night and day. It made him feel inadequate as a father, a husband, and a soldier. Above all, it made him feel guilty every day as a native of Gambia who was busy fighting in other distant countries while many of his fellow Gambians were being brutalized. Over the years, Njaga participated in numerous efforts with civil organizations through demonstrations in the US, financial contributions to the resistance uh, and the opposition group, and signing petitions that call for the release of political prisoners. But with increased despair, he watched all their peaceful efforts responded to with increasing bold brutality by Jame and his henchmen. He could no longer ignore his consent. He was compelled to seek alternative means. To this end, he joined some Gambians with military experience. Thus the event of 30th December 2014. Lieutenant Colonel Lamin Sane, Alaji Jajanyas, and Captain Jagajan are heroes whose ultimate sacrifice greatly contributed to the global attention to what was happening in the Gambia and helped push forward the, the eventual liberation of this country in December 2016. They should never be forgotten, for heroes do not die. Their heroic deeds are recounted through time. They live into eternity in blessed memory of the, of the people they have served. But before I conclude, I wish to thank the Ministry of Justice and the Gambia government for the efforts and the resources they have put in securing the corps over a period of time, doing all the necessary technical analysis, which must be very expensive, and they went through it because they are Gambians and Gambians deserve the best. We are much grateful to the government, in particular to the Ministry of Interior, for their efforts. We recognize it. Finally, uh, I pray to Allah in his infinite kindness that he grant Janatul Firdaus to the disease. And may Allah also, in his infinite kindness, bless the Gambia and bless all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jan. And finally, I call on uh, a representative of the family of uh, the late Alaji Nyas, retired Colonel Alaji Mdawunjai, to give us a short statement on behalf of uh, the family. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Honorable Minister of Justice. Honorable Minister of the Interior. Your Excellency the Senegalese Ambassador, representative of the EU and of the Cardi, uh, religious elders, Deputy Inspector General of Police,
family members of the heroes who we, are, who we have the occasion today uh, for the ceremony. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, religious leaders, all protocols observed. I want to take this opportunity to give you a short address. I want to firstly start by introducing myself. I am Al Haji Mumudun Daunjai, and I am the uncle of Alaji Jajanyas, who is one of the deceased, one of those we are honoring today. Jajanyas was the oldest son of the late Mumudunyas and Mariam Jai, my elder sister, who is unable to attend the ceremony as he is currently in the United Kingdom undergoing medical treatment, following her long detention by the former brutal regime and for what crime, I ask. Her only crime for the detention was for being a mother. Being the mother of one of those who took it onto themselves to try and do something about what was, what was happening in the Gambia. Now I ask, in what court of justice or law in what court of justice or law would the acts of omission of one person and another person being held responsible for that without being a situation. I asked that question. And she was not the only one who was detained. Family members were detained of all the three, including a little boy of about 14 years old. What would these mothers, family members, know about their son or brother involved in trying to remove a regime? What would they know about that? And why would they be punished? I tell you this story because that is why my sister is still in the United Kingdom undertaking treatment. They were detained for over six, seven months. I believe that uh, in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 286, it says, La nafsan illa usaha, laha ma kasabat wa alayha sabat and what that means really is Allah will not place on any soul a burden that he cannot carry. And also that for every person, any person, whatever he does, he reaps. If it is good, he reaps the, what is good. If it is bad, he reaps it. He is the one who is responsible and he is the one who takes it. Why did it fall on the uh, enemy or on the family? I say this because this is just to demonstrate what type of regime we had, the brutality and the insensitiveness of uh, what was going on. Jadanias was born on the 16th of March, 1967 in Bakau. He attended Bakau Primary School Latukunda School and the Gambia and the uh, Gambia Technical Training Institute. He enlisted in the Gambian Gendarmerie, and whilst in this security institution, he was promoted to a non-commissioned officer, later rising to the rank of sergeant. 
He was amongst the first group to, who attended the NCO's course in Turkey. He left for the UK in 1995 following the military coup of 1994. Whilst in the Gambia, sorry, whilst he was in the UK, he was hardworking and very supportive of his family in the Gambia, particularly his mother, Mariam Jai. He was loved and admired by family, friends, and colleagues. He was married to Satang Nyang in the UK just a few months prior to the December 30th incident. He left no offspring. His family, including his mother, Mariam Jai, his widowed wife, Satang Nyang, his brothers, sisters, and friends all miss him. The December 30th incident ushered in the beginning of the end of the former brutal regime. It was the catalyst. The catalyst that gave courage, determination, inspiration to the Gambian people to stand up to the dictator in order to effect change. So today, as we pay tribute to our three foreign heroes, Colonel Lamin Sane, Captain Jaganjai, and uh, Alaji Jajanyas, let us also please remember to pay tribute to their surviving comrades. Papa Fal, Mumudunjai, Alaji Baro, and Musa Saab. They may be present here with us today. Chernonjai and uh, Alaji Boy couldn't be with us today, but I'm sure that they are with us in spirit. The nation owes you all a big thank you, and I, for one, salute you. Let us all take a moment to remember all those who lost their lives in the struggle for the restoration of democracy in the Gambia. Whilst this solemn ceremony will bring some closure to family members of the fallen heroes, let us not lose sight of the fact that there are those who are still in the dark of the whereabouts of their loved ones. We pray that they will get the answers that they seek in the not too distant future. Honorable Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let's take a moment to look at the word honor, what it means, and where it is applicable to the heroes of the 30th December, both the fallen and the surviving, whether it applies to them. What is honor? What does it look like? I have a few definitions for you. One, regard with high respect of esteem. That is one interpretation. Fulfill an obligation or honor an agreement. That's another. <laughs> Passing or thing that brings credit, that's another. Adherence to what is right or to a conventional standard of conduct, that's another. Something regarded as a rare opportunity and bring, bring in pride and pleasure, such as privilege, that's an honor. And finally, something conferred as a distinction, especially an official award for bravery or achievement. All these are definitions of what honor is. Now I'm going to just make a few quotations, and I leave it to you to see whether these fallen heroes and the surviving members 
whether they deserve to be honored. The first quotation I'll give you is, it doesn't take a hero to order men into battle. It takes a hero to be one of those men who goes into battle. Now, did they go to battle? A soldier has no choice. They are ordered to go into battle, and they go. They don't have a choice. These people had choice. They were not soldiers. When I say they are not soldiers, they were not soldiers serving the Gambian military. But they voluntarily went into battle without being forced. So to me, I believe they are heroes. And this was a quotation by General Norman Squaskov, a U.S. Army general. So it's not my quotation. Another one is, courage is contagious. When a brave man takes a stand, the spine of others are often stiffened. And that is by Billy Graham, an American evangelist. Now, the stand that these people took, we believe, as we said, was the catalyst. It gave spine and strength to the Gambian people to start to try and uh, uproot this brutal regime. The other quotation I will give you is, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. And this was by Martin Luther King, Jr., an American Baptist minister. Now, let's also relate that, relate that to these people. They were all living in comfort in the, either in the UK, in Europe, or in the United States. But despite all that, they would just not sit and watch the suffering of their people. That was one of the reasons why they got involved in this. The next quotation, I'm sorry if I'm taking most of your time, but I think that these heroes deserve all right, uh, the tribute that uh, we want to give them. The next one is the true soldier fights, not because he hates what is in front of him, but because he loves what is behind him. That's why you fight. You fight the enemy, not just because you hate him, no, but what is behind you, your loved ones, all right, your freedoms, everything that is important to you, that is why you fight. And this is why these people came to fight. Now, this uh, quotation I'm going to give you is from Father Dennis Edward O'Brien of the United States Military uh, College. And it says, it is the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the organizer, who gave us the freedom of dem to demonstrate. It is the soldier who salutes the, the flag when, who serves beneath the flag 
and whose coffin is draped by the flag, who allows the protesters to burn the flag. We are able to have all this, the freedoms that we enjoy. The press is able to write what they want. Uh, where, where you have democracy, all this is possible. And you can only have it when these soldiers who are always there to stand and fight for these freedoms. So, after having given you these quotations, my question is, do these people deserve to be honored? The quotation by Twisticide, an Athenian historian and general said, the bravest are solely those who have the clearest vision of what is before them, glory and danger alike, and yet, notwithstanding, go out to meet it. Did they know what was going to happen to them? It's clear to them that they could lose their lives, that they, they, they would have to make the ultimate sacrifice. They knew that, and they left their families and still they embark on this, uh, this incident. So I think uh, that is enough quotations, and I hope that this will allow us to make a judgment whether these fallen heroes and those who survive deserves to be honored. If the nation believes that the heroes of 30th December have fulfilled the above criteria, then I believe and I am sure the other family members do as well, that they should be honored in some way so that their sacrifice will, not be, will be remembered. I now wish to seize this opportunity to thank the officials of the Victim Center and members of the diaspora, including Mr. Chernoba, Mrs. Juga Jain for their support and diligence in this matter. I also wish to thank the Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Interior, and to you, to the President, Mr. Adam Obaro, and his government for making this day possible. It has been a long journey. Together, a long journey together. But finally, we can accord our fallen heroes a most deserving final rest. May their souls rest in perfect peace. Amen. I thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, retired Colonel Ndawunjai. That brings us to the end of the statements from the representatives of the family members. And uh, the penultimate item on the agenda is the statement by the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice to close uh, this uh, round of statements before we do the official handing over. Honorable Attorney General. of Interior, Chief Kadiseka, 
the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Your Excellency Ambassador Salu Yai, the Republic of Senegal, the representative of the European Union, Commander Ndaunjai, family members of the disease here present, distinguished guests. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi wa jiwun. It is with profound solemnity that we are gathered here today for the handing over of the mortal remains of Mr. Lamin Sane, Mr. Alaji Jajanyas, and Mr. Njagajain to their respective families. Due to the ongoing criminal trial, the remains of Mr. Solo Sanding, which was also exhumed and identified, could not be handed over to his family today. This ceremony, which takes place in the context of our transitional justice process serves as a demonstration of our belief in upholding human dignity and the principles of basic human decency. Every individual, irrespective of their circumstances, ought to be afforded a decent and befitting burial. Only through this, can we restore their human dignity and provide closure for their families, friends, and loved ones. As a government, we are committed to establishing the truth about all disappeared victims regardless, and that we will continue to pursue the exhumations of individuals buried under sinister circumstances through the work of the truth Reconciliation and Reparations Commission, which has now started its public hearings. In the case of the remains of Mr. Lamin Sane, Mr. Alaji Jajanyas, and Mr. Njagajain, I would like to thank everyone who has worked with us in this process, particularly Superintendent Thomas R.J. Gomez and his team from the major crimes and scientific support units of the Gambia Police Force for their professionalism and painstaking dedication to the exhumation of the remains, and to Justice Rapid Response for their timely assistance in the forensic identification of the exhumed remains. Without the collaboration of these two, we perhaps would not have held this ceremony here today. But most importantly, I would like to thank the families of the disease for being present and for the remarkable patience and cooperation you have shown throughout this process. We hope that this ceremony here today will mark the beginning of the closure of a very painful period of your lives. We also hope that by this act, the government would have contributed towards restoring the dignity of your loved ones by ensuring that they receive decent and fitting burials. May Allah grant them all al -Janna. I thank you all. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Attorney General. Minister of Justice, we now come to the last uh, item on the agenda, which is the official handing over of the remains of the three Gambians we are gathered here for. Of course, as you heard from the speech of the Attorney General, the remains had to be subject to a series of forensic and DNA tests in order to determine the proper identities of the, of, of, of the people that were exhumed. Of course, it is very important in any transitional justice uh, mechanism that you don't just exhume bodies, but that you do a proper identification of the exhumed bodies. And that was what was responsible for the uh, delay in the 
I mean, the handing over of the bodies or the remains, uh, because uh, the DNA exams had to be carried out uh, across continents. But finally, we were able to get it. And uh, what we will suggest is that uh, we will all stand up. We have the three coffins uh, placed uh, on the side of uh, the tents. And uh, we will have the, the Deputy Inspector General of Police hand over the certificates, the DNA certificates of identification to the representatives of each family. And uh, that will be officially done by the uh, DIG, as I said. So we all remain standing and so that we can see, I mean, uh, the process. And uh, we can have only the three representatives of uh, the families of Lamin Sane, Jagajan, and Al- Okay, we now move on to the family of Lamin Sane. That is the next uh, up in here. All right, we then move to the remains of Jagajan. Uh, Assalamualaikum salam warahmatullahi wa fainala alhaji mamadou ndawo ndjay alhaji mamadou ndjaw ndjay yow victime cité kan nga ci bop alhaji jaajo nyas jaajo nyas di domi ku ñewa modou nyas leed modou nyas ak mariam ndjay di suma sista wa mom nga angal ter fi nekane yow naka nga fel tay bes bi lan la remind ma of nit naka la wara dundé life am parce que nit 
ñaarel dafa wara selfless ñi liñ demonstrate moy selflessness xalaatu ñu seen bop rek am fa ñu ngay xalaatam ñeneen ñi nga xamne seen loved ones family members friends comme ni mako waxe won rek ñom ñi ngi nekkon abroad wala ñu ñew di def li be di fi ñaaka seen bakken fañ togon mu non nañ fa nekk comfortable di topato seen affaire waye def wuñ ko ah ñu ne dinañ dem dinañ ñew fi jaay seen bakken ah pour jema gene load ak ciono bi nga xamne mo nekk ci ko gambiance lolu moy di xew ñew nañ ñaak ci seen bakken nga xamne moy di ultimate sacrifice ah te lolu comme ni mako waxe rek moy selflessness bi xalaatu seen bokk rek waaw so nit su fekke ne ya ngay xalaat sa morom lu mo feel ak ni mo mel even su de sa nebola sa su fekke ne dara xewut sa ah jamma dina mu na am parce que always di nga bugga di gis lu ba ci koku non so gisey lu ko naxare rek di nga jog jema taxaw so lolu fatelu na ma lolu ak yene nak yene nak yene ah lolu amna solo trop buñ la informé ne like sa mbokka bokka na ci victime si nga xamantene ni ñaka na sen bagen ci ko bi ban yeg yeg la am ci yow ah man dafa nekkon surprise dafa nekkon surprise parce que comme ni ma la ko waxe uk la nekkon te ño nekk in the same town together so bi mo ño dafa ne mo holiday la ño ah xaw ma won ci li nga xamne mom la em ba kon on so di nga gis ne bimako yege it was a shock and a surprise waaw so bo ko yege ak dir bum tok gisu loko ak ad ad yum tok gis lo li nga xamantene ni mom moy niwam ban impact lo lolu am ci sa life amna impact ci suñ life ñun yeb du man kena waye mbokam yi xaritam yi yaayam comme ni mako waye yaayam ci bopam dañ ko fi tiye won bi li xewé ñu dal di ko tiye tej ko ñu ko place on detention for over seven months waaw ak ki sax be nga xamne lolu indi na problem ci yaramam be lolo tax mu nga angalter ben tay di jël treatment so di nga gis ne affect na family bi affect na ñep ba paré li ci gëna miti moy li xewna ba paré jotu ñu won body bi xamuñ body bi fum nekk wala lolu tam gën nañu na xari parce que su fekko ne nit ki dena ku nekk da fa de wa waye ñun nit in islam dañ xamne nit su de da fa am niñ ko def djebal ko boromam lolu nak mënuñ ko wona am be tay lañ ñoo soga jo opportunity bobu kon nak ñu ngi gërem ñepp ñi nga xamne involve nañ ci be mëna mek today mu dal di possible ñu leena wax thank you parce que at least nañ am some close wa est ce que gis nga sa bopa une position dal di nga mëna balal ki nga xamantene ne moy jamé mo fi defon ni ah xam nga balal mom dess na ci naka nga balalé nit ki nit ki su fekké né def na mu réalise né def na mu djégalu yalla ci bopam dafa né suñ ko toñé suñ ko djégalo mu djégal ñu té ñun nit la ko ah waye su fekké né toñ nga yow ben tay na mënu lo nangu né dang doon toñ ah koku dina doy war pour nga mën ko djégal dé xajna dinañ djéma muñ djéma faté li nga xamné xewon na ah as long as ni ngay am peace and tranquility ci dekk bi ah dekk ba nga dem kanam xajna lolu dina tax ñu commencer di faté waye comme ni ma la ko waxe ban tay am na ño xamné gisuñ sen body self sen loved ones people have disappeared ben tay gisuñ len xam nga conditions yoyu nak pour nga né nga fog give faté everything du yomba because lolu ben tay mu ngi fofu fok yoyu non yeb ñu mën ko ñu li jant ko ñoñu tam families yoyu tam ñu mëna am close wa man suma djégalé té kenen mom mu ngé sofa ben tay ah koku djégalo ngut dina difficult wa so gisé ñu am di tout commission fim nekk muy li fim ñu ñoy yoyu non yeb nañu then in the end dinañ mëna balalanté wa man non la ko gisé lu amna solo trop lan nga am pour ñaanal ñi nga xamanté ñom ñoy aji jitu bi ah ma ngi leena ñaanal yaalla yërem leen yaalla sédal seen suuf ah yaalla oyefal seen bamel yaalla xaaralen ci aajana yi gëna ko wé 
ñi nga xamne ñoñ leen fi bayyi nak yalla aar leen yalla barkel leen yalla sutural leen yalla may leen wër ak wër la may leen fan ak gudd ak wër gi yaram ak mu ci rafet ci barke rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam barke alquran karim jërëjëf Why did they leave the shores of America and Europe? They left their comfort and come to Gambia to try to end the brutal dictatorship that was there. Now, these are people who could have stayed in their homes and enjoyed their life and just support their families and say, well, that is Gambia, let the Gambians deal with it. But they didn't do it so. They said, the Gambia is where our people are. This is the country where we were born. And we cannot sit and allow this brutality to keep going on and on and on. Therefore, they came together in an attempt to end the dictatorship. But what I want to add here is that, look, let Gambians now wake up that what has happened with Yaya Jame, 22 years, if we had joined hands together, if we had done what these people did, Yaya Jame would not have been here. 22 years. He may, have been, he may have been here maybe three years, four years, five years, but it went on and on and on. And it is only after the international community mobilized a force that was what removed Yaya Jami. I want to bring this to the attention of every Gambian that, yes, we had an election. We mobilized, we formed a coalition. There was a coalition candidate who stood and won. But that didn't make Yaya Jame to leave, even though he accepted defeat. But then after a few years, he turned around. Now, 
Any person in his right mind should know that. Yaya Jame's 22 years was a brutal dictatorship with killings, torture, abuse of office, abuse of our natural resources, you name it, all that happened during that time. And I must say also that, let's look at ourselves again. Yaya Jame alone didn't do this. They were enablers. Some of them are still around, some in senior government positions still, who enabled Yaya Jame to do what he did. So this must be a wake-up call for all of us Gambians, that we must now wake up, join hands together to make sure that we do not have anything similar to what was here during the time of Yaya Jame. We must hold our leaders accountable. We must mobilize and take part in the political process to ensure that we don't leave vacuums for people to occupy and then oppress us. We must not allow that to happen again. Yes, I am a victim myself of Yaya Jame, but I always say my victimization is minor. If you compare it with those who were brutally tortured, if you compare it with those who love their loved ones, who have disappeared or were killed, if you compare it with those who were massively abused, my victimization really is minor. Yes, I was detained and arrested by the NIA. No, uh, uh, actually no, no, that was not related to me. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have been involved in, in the struggle. In which way? In the struggle against Jame. But I wasn't here in the country myself. I used to come in and out. Yes, but I was involved in the struggle against Jame in many ways, by supporting political parties, by supporting civic organization, and supporting families of victims. Mm -hmm. Well, let us look at the testimony of uh, Major Chongan uh, during the past two days. And I think it has been an opener for Gambians at large. Now, this is a guy who was detained for almost three years, tortured in many forms, uh, brutalized in many forms, detained unlawfully for almost three years. He was able to narrate his story. But finally, he was able to stand and say, I have forgiven everybody who has offended me. That was a very commendable and touching remark. But again, what it is showing is that Gambians can forgive and reconcile. But let me say this, there cannot be any reconciliation without justice first. Let the perpetrators come forward and tell their story and tell the truth. Let them beg, let them admit the mistakes that they did and the crimes that they committed and then they can ask for forgiveness. I believe Gambians will find it in their hearts and minds to forgive them and reconcile. Because we can only move forward if we reconcile. And we don't want to be stagnant. We are a nation that must and have to move forward. And in moving forward, we need reconciliation. Well, like I said, let them come forward and tell their story. Let men admit the crimes that they have committed and ask for forgiveness. If Chongan is able to name all those people and say, I have forgiven those who have wronged me. I mean, I think it's an eye opener for them to know that yes, Gambians could be forgiving. So I urge all of them to admit the wrongs that they have committed and come out and say, we are sorry, forgive me. Are you hopeful for a better Gambia? Of course, because having passed through the 22 years of, of, of Jame, Many Gambians were abroad. You name it, there is a Gambian who can do it. There are so many Gambian specialists, qualified professionals, who are all over the world doing wonderful things. And I believe quite a lot of them are yearning to come back and contribute their quota to national development. So we must work. The government should look at that potential that the Gambia has. Ensure that there is the enabling environment to bring them back so that they can contribute to national development. We can do that and they, we must hope for a better Gambia. There is no other way. <laughs>
اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الاولين اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الاخرين اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الملائكه الى يوم الدين ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره 